Hey, what's going on? Luke here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Pang and Haas. Not necessarily the off-field incident that's happening right now. Obviously, that is a big talking point. But I'm going to be talking about, as you can tell by the title of the video, why Pang and Haas is not worth $1 million. Now, just before we get talking about Pang and Haas, I need to mention that there is a sponsor for this video. The sponsor for this video is BetU, and more specifically, Earn You. Earn You is a part of BetU and it allows you to place bets on NRL, AFL, cricket and all major sports risk free. You can even place bets on esports such as FIFA and League of Legends. You can even watch the esports events so it makes it a little bit easier to make those bets. This is all done through BetU tokens and you can win money through the tokens as all profits and bets are done through the tokens. Yes, I just said tokens a lot. To get the tokens, you need to deposit into your account and that will give you points to play with and then you can use those points to make the bets. 1000 BetU tokens equals 10 points to make bets with. So you kind of get the gist there. You can make bets individually or you can join in on the rounds that they do. They do rounds each week and within those rounds they also have leaderboards. So you can make money a fair few ways on this platform. Now I have a referral code in the description below. You can go ahead and click on that or you can just go ahead and chuck in Mr. Luke where it allows you. Basically this just shows that you saw my video and you've come across from my video so it really does help me if you do use my referral code. Once again thank you to bet you and more importantly earn you for coming on board the channel. Guys please gamble responsibly. You also have to be 18 plus as well. I mean it is gambling after all so you have to be 18 plus but Australians we love a little bit of a gamble especially NRL fans. We love to have a little bit of a punt especially me so go ahead use this platform use bet you use earn you and help support the people that support me. Now I believe his management is throwing it around to other clubs, throwing it around to the Broncos saying he is underpaid at the Broncos, he should be paid $1 million a year. I'm here to say that he definitely should not be paid $1 million a year. Let's start off with the incident that's happening right now, him and Albert Kelly. Is it that big of a deal? Probably not, but it's another sort of drunken, physical sort of altercation with Payne Haas. He sort of has a history of doing that. Um, he has a history of sort of getting in trouble. Nothing too major, but also pretty major at the same time. Um, obviously, the one that happened where he threatened the girl or whatever happens. So he does have a little bit of a history of getting in trouble off the field. So there's your first red flag on why you shouldn't be paying him $1 million. I know there's some other players who are probably going to attract a $1 million who... You know, do have some incidents off the field. Look at your Cameron Munsters, your Brandon Smiths, all that sort of stuff. They're guys who could get one million, um, and they also have some incidents off the field, but nothing that's going to get them sent to jail. You know what I mean? It's usually just uh, stuff with drugs or things that's just going to hurt them themselves rather than hurting other people. So. Paynars found himself pretty lucky to not have anything further happen the previous time. Obviously, this one with Albert Kelly, it's I think it more reflects on Albert Kelly because he's someone who seems to get in trouble a lot when he's on the drink, including when he was overseas as well. So I think that sort of reflects on Albert Kelly. But let's talk about him actually on the field. I've already talked about his off-field stuff. Got that out of the way. Um, on the field, Payne Haas, incredible player, great forward, the best prop in the game, you would have to say. Um, I don't even think it's really close at this point. I think he is the clear number one prop. Does that mean he should be on a million a year? Definitely not. And I think it was Wayne Bennett who said that he wouldn't spend more than a certain amount on a prop, and I think he is pretty spot on. How many times can you look at teams who've won a premiership or have been one of the top sides and went, yeah, nah, the prop is the best player in the side? It just doesn't happen. They always have some really, really good spine players. Look at Penrith. They had Nathan Cleary, Jerome Lawyer, and Abby Corrissey all play for New South Wales. Adi Isaiah Yo, Dylan Edwards is very serviceable. They had a very, very good spine. Look at the Storm for the last couple of years. It's always been Cameron Smith, Cooper Cron, Billy Slater, now Puppenhausen, Monster Hughes, um, Harry Grant, Brandon Smith. A lot of good players in that spine. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that I think that props are useless or, or worthless. I just don't think they're worth a million dollars. And I think Payne Haas being the best prop, he's the one that we're going to be talking about. He's the one who's asking for a million dollars. So that's the player that we're specifically going to be looking at. Because I think if you look at Payton Ars and say he's not worth a million, you look at all the others and you say that they aren't worth a hell of a lot either. So Payton Ars, he does offer a lot. He's got a great motor on him. Does he play 80 minutes every week? No, but I think he is capable of doing so. But we have seen a team like the Cowboys. A team like the Cowboys with Jason Tumalalo, he was literally winning Dally M's, um, was winning premierships. He was having a fantastic career. Probably more accolades than what Payton Ars has got right now. Uh, and he signed a huge contract, and look at where it's got the Cowboys. Absolutely nowhere. It's got them competing for the wooden spoon every year. They realistically don't look any closer to making the top eight this year than what they did back when he signed for this $1 million deal, and they still had Thurston and Morgan and all that sort of stuff when he was around. So, um, look, Jason Tumalalo, fantastic player, but it also shows how quick the game can move on. So, Tumalalo, was, he was the peak. He was the pinnacle of forwards. Now you probably look at guys like your Payne Arses and like your Cameron Murrays. But I think with Jason Tamalalo, my point is that they went and signed him on a huge money deal 
And then the, the rest of the side wasn't strong because they have him on so much money. So Michael Morgan retired at the same time. Thurston was gone. All of a sudden, they didn't have a spine. They didn't have a number one. They didn't have a six. They didn't have a seven. Didn't really have a nine either because Granville was on a decline as well. Um, and it showed that a forward cannot carry this side. Whereas if you invested that money into a halfback or a 5'8 or a fullback, at least you got something there. At least you got a game breaker. You got a game winner. When you look at State of Origin, Payne Ars plays State of Origin every year. He's not necessarily a starter. You got your junior Paulos, you got your Sophitis. He's not a shoe in to start for New South Wales. And I feel like if you got a guy who's on a million dollars, he should be one of the first players picked. And yet, I don't think he would be. You could have Nathan Cleary, you have Tedesco, Tom Jaboyevich, Latrell Mitchell, um, Anna Carr. You got all these other players who you'd pick ahead of him. Damian Cook as of late, um, Cameron Murray. There's so many players who you're looking at New South Wales side and say they're way more important than Payne Haas. And whenever he's played for New South Wales, I've never really sat there and went, Gee, that was a really, really good game by Payne Haas. Yet he is asking for $1 million. Now the Broncos, look at the Broncos. They're a perfect example of this. They already have him, right? They already have him. And they've went and signed a few decent players. Now Adam Reynolds, Kurt Capewell, um, even guys like Bronco Lee and that sort of stuff. They've signed a few decent players. Are they in a better spot than they were last year or the year before? Not necessarily. Now, obviously, I think they are going to have a better year overall, but it just shows that Payton Haas is not a guy who's going to lift your team into the top eight. And for the sides who are able to offer him $1 million a year, which is what he's reportedly after, it's going to be a shitty sides. It's going to be your sides like the Tigers and, and the Dragons, all that sort of stuff. They're going to be the ones who actually have the cat space and are able to throw money at him. And he's already shown with the Broncos that, you know, with, with some decent youngsters around as well, but he's already showed that he's not capable of taking your side into the top eight or even the top four, even competing for a premiership. Whereas some of the other guys that are on the market or going to be on the market in the next couple of years, uh, they've been able to prove that they can make it into the top eight or they've been really influential in state of origin or, or they've actually done something in the game. Payne Haas has been fantastic for the Broncos and he has been for a couple of years now. He is incredibly young and I feel like that is a big reason why teams might be willing to throw the coin at him because he is so young. But he also is so young, so there's still plenty of time for him to fall off. Plenty of time for him to improve as well, I get that. But uh, look, like I said, Jason Tumbler, a perfect example of a guy who was at the top of the NRL. And then a couple of years later, he's just a good forward. He's not really that upper echelon anymore. So it does show that the game does change a lot. And I think Payne Ars is the sort of player who can adapt to it. But I probably would have said the same thing about Tamalala as well. So it does show you that the game can change and it can influence who should be paid what. And if they're effective in the NRL. And, and don't get me wrong, Payne Ars is always going to be effective. I think he's always going to be a very, very good player. I think he can be an elite player, but I wouldn't go ahead and pay one million for him and I think if any club does it they're just going to stuff themselves salary cap wise and we've seen in the past that this is what can happen I mean I'm a Bulldog supporter I watched the Bulldogs try and sign 7 billion props and yet we couldn't sign a fullback and right now we still can't sign a halfback so um, <laughs> I've seen clubs spend money poorly and I've seen what it can do to a club so uh, if I'm the Broncos I'm not throwing one million dollars at him I'm saying you can go if you want and you invest into other players. They have plenty of good young players, the Broncos. They don't necessarily need Payne Haas. I know that seems like a crazy thing to say, but I don't think any NRL team necessarily needs Payne Haas. Wherever he ends up signing, good luck to him. But in terms of him as a player, he's not someone when the game's on the line, you're like, geez, I hope Payne Haas can do something. You look at your guys like your Nathan Cleary's, your Adam Reynolds, your Luke Cleary's, your Papa Nelson's, your Tedesco's, uh, your Jerome Hughes's, your Cameron Munster's. You look at all those sort of guys. You don't look for a prop. And he is the best prop, I will say that. But you don't go looking for a prop. You don't even really go looking for second rowers or locks. So I feel like Payne Haas, fantastic player, but he just isn't worth $1 million. And that's the point I'm making in this video. Anyways, guys, that's all I really got to say about Payne Haas. I think I got my point across that I don't think he's worth $1 million. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think Payne Haas is worth $1 million? I feel like there's going to be plenty of people who say yes. I feel like there's going to be plenty of people who say no. I'm interested to see what Broncos fans think. Do you want to sign him for one million or is it better off him leaving and you signing someone else? Anyways, I'm going to wrap things up here. If you did happen to enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure you use the notification bell. Don't rely on the sub boxes. Who does that? Don't rely on the sub boxes. Use the notification bell and never miss any of my videos or streams. Also, go ahead and give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. My face looks Mr. Luke, but everything else is Mr. Luke and YT. Give me a follow. Give me an ad. Also, once again, special mention to the sponsor of this video, which was Earn You. Use my referral code. It's in the description below. Or you can just type in Mr. Luke where it lets you. Basically, just lets them know that you've come from my videos. So go ahead and support the people who support me. And yeah, that's where I'm going to end this video. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. See you.